Hello everyone. In today's session, the seventh uh, meeting for business uh, research method, we will discuss about sampling. However, since today is a holiday, I will conduct this session through asynchronous learning. So I have received the recording of the presentation of group six, group four, and group seven. For the presentation of group uh, six, I expect for you to do the Q&A session on the YouTube comment section. So please ask your question on the YouTube comment section and the presenter will answer your question also on the YouTube chat section. As for this session, I have watched the presentation and first I will give the feedback to group four and group seven. Hello everyone, uh, we're from group four and today we're going to present to you guys about our progress of sampling for our final paper. My name is Fadli Fadian. My name is Ferdi. And my name is Alif Ravindika. So we're going to start for uh, we're going to start to our criteria for respondents. Uh, our criteria is are, are those who are first currently employed. And second, they have to be they have to work in an office settings. And third, they have to be able to access internet. And the, the office have to provide the technology for each employee to use utilize it. And third, they. The respondents have to use social media daily. Um, using this criteria, we are able to specify certain hypotheses and narrow down the respondent range. And you, also using this criteria, we are we using non-probability sampling technique because there is no clear list of population of respondents. And this method is seen as the most suitable the most suitable method because. There is no uh, there is no clear list of population to be prospective respondents. Um, our questionnaire will be consist of seventeen questions uh, with minimal sample of eighty five respondents and using four variables. Okay, so now I'm here to present uh, sub chapter three point six point two, uh, which is the screening questions. Uh, for research, we need screening questions to find the right respondent. Uh, with the right respondent, uh, the data obtained is well, will be right on target. Okay, so there will be four screening questions uh, in our uh, questionnaire. The first one is, uh, do you have a job? The first one is, uh, what was your highest education? The third one is, uh, in what area are you working at? And the last one is how long have you been working in that particular area? The next one is 3.6.4, which is the respondent's profile. Okay, so respondent's profile shows the profile of the respondents uh, who took the survey. Uh, there are several questions in the uh, profile of the, the respondents, such as name, uh, gender, uh, we put male or female. Uh, the next one is age, marital status, uh, highest education, uh, which will be divided into six options. Junior high school, senior high school, vocational high school, bachelor, master, and PhD. And the next one is area of work, uh, will be divided into eight. Education, finance, mass media, communication, government, uh, mining and oil, uh, law, and etc. Et 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 I put others in the etc. Uh, options, so respondents who don't have, uh, who, are, who are not working in the area in the options can uh, fill the answer. And the last one is work experience. So we divided into four variables of study. The first variable we divided into four, five, I mean. The first one is I cannot resist using social media to follow current event during working hours. Second one, I would use social media to follow the current situation and update my family members or friends during working hours. The third one, I would use social media to post pictures 
videos and comments during working hours. The next one is I will use social media to chat with my family members or friends during working hours. And fifth, I would like or comment on content that my family members or friends post on social media during working hours. These five sub variable is from are from social cyber loafing from the scale of one until five. The second variable is psychological detachment. We divide it into three. The the first one is I forget about work when I use social media. The second question is I, social media can make me distance myself from work. And the third question is I do not think about work at all when I use social media from the scale one until five. The third variable, we divide it into four questions. First, you feel mentally and physically physically tired every time you come from you come home from work second question is every time you come from work you feel tired the third question is every time you come from work you feel your work is tiring and last is your energy runs out after coming home from work and the last variables from mental health variables we divided into five variables five questions the first question is you feel positive all the times. Second question you feel your emotions stable. The third one you feel satisfied with your life. The fourth you find your life interesting and the fifth you have things you want to achieve in the future. So uh, that's all from our presentation and thank you guys. Thank you. For group four the progress is quite clear. However, I have a couple of suggestions to give. First of all, for your sampling technique, you have mentioned that you're using non-probabilistic sampling, and that is okay. You can use non-probabilistic sampling, especially since you cannot have the sampling frame or the list of the population that you need to do a random sampling. However, you need to be more specific on the type of non-random sampling. So there are there are uh, three, uh, four, four different types of uh, non-random sampling. You have the convenient sampling, which is not uh, the ideal uh, technique for sampling. And you have purposive sampling. You have quota sampling and, uh, and snowball sampling. So there's four different uh, non-probabilistic sampling method. And I'm, I suggest you that uh, you use uh, the at least the purposive sampling. So, and I think from the criteria, from the screening question that you've already explained, you are already using purposive sampling. But please state, state it explicitly in your proposal that you are using purposive sampling because if you are using convenient sampling, that's, that, uh, that's, that won't reflect uh, well for your uh, study. So be explicit, mention that you are using uh, purposive sampling uh, or quota sampling or snowball sampling. If, because if you, you, didn't, if you don't uh, state uh, the, the method specifically, uh, you might be, but the reader might be confused and thinks that you are using convenient sampling. The second comment I have is for the screening question, because your studies about internet, I think there should be a question that uh, screen for internet user. So for example, are you using internet for your work? Because if the employees, the, if the respondent uh, worse uh, in, a, in, a, in, in a situation where it's not possible to use the internet or uh, perhaps uh, I think um, for example for, for outdoor type of, of uh, employee or labor type of employee then perhaps the questionnaire your, your study might not be relevant so uh, perhaps you should ask a question about internet use uh, in in their job 
Uh, last but not least, so you've given the English uh, version of the question, and uh, that's uh, that's good. That's okay. For the report, you you need to use English, but for the questionnaire for the respondent, you need to translate the question to Bahasa, because if you use English for your questionnaire, uh, it's, I'm worried that no one will, or very few will answer your question. So uh, please translate your question to Bahasa for the questionnaire, and you can use, you can use bilingual uh, in your report, so in your, uh, uh, in, in the questionnaire section of your report. So when you uh, so when you report the proposal, you can use both the English and the Bahasa so the lecturer can assess the quality of your tra translation. So do the report in English, but for the questionnaire, it's better to uh, ask the questions uh, in Bahasa to increase the response rate and the quality of the answer because we need to make the questionnaire as easy as possible to be understood by the, the respondent. Okay. Um, so now we're going to uh, explain on our progress on chapter three. So first we have um, our sampling method. So. In, the, uh, in our research, we use a non-probability sampling method using judgment sampling techniques. So non-probability sampling with judgment sampling technique is a sampling technique in which researchers use information from respondents that match um, their cr criteria. So our sample for this research is specifically the Gen, the Gen Z or Generation, Generation Z from the Jabodetabek area that have visited the Block M area. And then um, we're going to explain uh, about our questionnaire design. So our questionnaire was constructed um, based on the existing skills that is adapted from the previous research to fit in the context of the place and placement communication. So those skills were chosen by first specifying the domain of each construct and then we generate a sample of items uh, for each construct, which were carefully assesses, assessed by the researchers in order to find those that were most suitable to the study context. So um, in order uh, to avoid a, a lengthy questionnaire, we prefer shorter scales with uh, over the more extensive ones. And then we also use a seven point Likert scale that uh, range from the strongly disagree to the strongly agree. Uh, and okay, uh, now we're gonna, uh, the, for the introduction. So it's the initial stage of the research questionnaire. Uh, this section contains contain self-introduction, a brief explanation of the research and the purpose of the research. So this will be written in the questionnaire. And then for the screening uh, question, screening questions are given to see whether the respondent is suitable with the criteria determined by the study so that it can avoid respondent, respondent who should not fill out the research questionnaire. With appropriate respondent, the data often is right on target Filter question in the study are age and have we ever visited visited block M area? So once the the respondent answer the questionnaire, like for for example, their age doesn't uh, fit the generation Z, it's not on the range, and they never visited the block M area, the questionnaire will immediately stop for them. They don't need to uh, fill the questionnaire any longer. So it will be easier for us to uh filter the data that we will receive and it will not take the respondent the respondents time to fill the questions okay so next one we'll have the main question which is the core section uh that that is related to the 
variables of the study that we have, which is self-brain congruity, self-expressiveness, positive word of mouth, intention to forward, and lastly, place brain love. For the respondent profile, as mentioned previously, we targeted uh, Generation Z from Jabutabek area. And the several questions regarding the profile of the respondent are the gender, which is uh, male or female, age, and uh, then they have visited block M area or not. And we have uh, we targeted this by spreading the Google Forms for our questionnaire uh, to our groups of friends uh, so that it will be coming, it will come to the right targeted market. Uh, I think that's all for our progress in the sam sampling method and the respond profile and the questionnaire design if you have any question or want to add something to the progress you can simply uh, chat us thank you thank you thank you okay as for group seven so i have a couple of questions that i'd like to uh, ask uh, first one is why do you want to limit to Gen Z? Okay, so you, it's fine. It's okay if you want to limit your sample to Gen Z, but you need to uh, put that uh, limitation. You, you need to put uh, that context perhaps in the title of your study and also in the introduction. You need to explain specifically why... Uh, why you want to limit your study and why it is interesting and important to study uh, this uh, phenomenon in the context of Gen Z. As for the respondent profile, so the age for Gen Z is between five years old to 25 years old. So if, for example, in the respondent profile, the, the respondent answer that they're over 25 years old, then you have to exclude the, the response because they're not Gen Z. I think that's also making it difficult because uh, currently, uh, I don't think it's possible for you to survey minors or people uh, younger than perhaps 17 years old or younger. So uh, I think the possible range for this survey is between 18 years old to 25 years old. So that's a very a limited, uh, very limited um, pool of respondents. So uh, it's up to you if you want to, if you still want to focus on Gen Z, uh, it's okay. So, but you need to explain specifically why is it important, and then you have to accom accommodate it. It, it. it might be a bit more difficult for you to get uh, the number of respondents because. Uh, you cannot survey those above 25 and you cannot survey minors uh, uh, which is 17 years old or younger. Additionally, uh, additionally, um, so uh, you also, your, your screening question check only uh, whether the respondent ever visited Block M but not uh, people living in the greater Jakarta area. So you need to be specific in your criteria of respondent. You, you mentioned that your respondent are those people living in greater Jakarta and because you choose block M, that's quite understandable. Uh, so it's, it would be difficult for uh, people living outside greater Jakarta to visit uh, uh, block M, perhaps only uh, uh, very rarely at that. But for people living in Greater Jakarta, I think that's they have a greater chance of uh, visiting Block M. Uh, but uh, you need to be specific, uh, and also about the Block M, you have to be specific because Block M, there's Block M Plaza, there's Block M area. You need to be specific on what what uh, what part or what area of Block M that 
do they face it if whether they are just passing by or if they are shopping in their uh, sightseeing so you need, you need to, be, to be specific on the activities done in uh, when uh, the respondent visited block m and uh, specifically screen for those who are living uh, living in greater jakarta and screen out those who who live outside greater jakarta Okay, guys, now I'm going to give additional material for uh, sampling. But, but first, I'd like to uh, uh, praise the group six for their very uh, detailed explanation of sampling. So I'm, I don't think I will need to add, uh, more, uh, add more information. But I just want to highlight the important uh, parts of that presentation. For, uh, first of all, is the reason why we do sampling. So basically, uh, the, the purpose of sampling is to, uh, to estimate the parameter of the population without measuring the entire population. So basically, by sampling a few or a subset of the population, for example, if you have 1,000 uh, employees in your company, then by sampling only 100, for example, you can estimate the parameter of the population, which is the 1,000 employees. If you want to know the employee satisfaction of your of the employee of your company, then you can just measure the employee satisfaction of the 100 employee in the sample, and then estimate based on that data the employee satisfaction of your 1,000 1, employees. However, in uh, sampling, there are sampling errors. So that happens when the sample does not uh, uh, represent uh, the, the, the population. So the measurement of from the sample differs from the parameter of the population. And that happens due to uh, improper sampling. So the way, the way to uh, minimize uh, sampling error is to select the appropriate uh, method of uh, sampling. So this is, I'll skip this. Okay, so first, uh, another reason is that it's, it's not always possible for a study to conduct a census. A census is when you measure the entire population. If you have 1,000 employees and then you survey all 1,000 employees and that is a census, not a sampling. But if you only measure, if you only survey 100 and then estimate the entire population based on the 100 employee that is sampling. Okay, so in here uh, we have all, we have uh, the different types of uh, sampling. So basically it's divided into probabilistic and non-probabilistic, unrestricted and restricted. Basically to use probabilistic sampling, is the ideal situation, but uh, it requires a sampling frame, which is a list of the entire population. So if you want to do uh, a probabilistic sampling for the 1,000 employees, then you have to get the list of all 1,000 employees of that, uh, that company. If, if you cannot obtain the list, then you cannot do probabilistic sampling. Uh, however, that is still okay. So, uh, in most cases, uh, the business research is uh, it's not possible. Uh, so, so, in most cases of business research, it's not possible to get the sampling frame. So, most often, the researcher use non-probabilistic sampling. However, even uh, in the non-probabilistic sampling, there are significant differences between unrestricted and restricted uh, 
selection. So in the unrestricted, there's actually, uh, so there's no systematics, there's no, there's no criteria for the selection. So in this case, the worst possible type of sampling design is convenience. Worst because it doesn't, it's, it usually has the highest degree of sampling error. So in the convenient, because there's there's no there there are no criteria, it's it's likely that the, the survey is biased toward one uh, one characteristic. For example, if you want to uh, select 100 employees by convenient sampling, it's possible that your sample be biased towards the male or uh, uh, employees, while for example the the employee is the, the the company have a balanced gender for example 50 50 between male and female employees but because of the convenient sampling because you choose only your friend or only those you know uh, then the sample gets biased toward the male that that's often happen in convenient samplings you know? so that's why it's advice it's strong advice for you to use other sampling, even if you use non-probabilistic sampling, that's is still okay, but do not use convenient sampling in your study. For the purposive sampling, it's divided into judgment and quota. So uh, all so the remaining three uh sampling have criteria. So based on a certain criteria, then which uh, uh you you select a couple of a few sample and you exclude uh, the, the, the element of the population that doesn't match the criteria. Uh, for uh, the quota sampling, it's similar, but there's a quota if, and once the quota is met, you no longer uh, accept response, response from that part. For example, if you have a quota of 50 males and 50 females, once you've got the 50 male respondent, you stop uh surveying males and you focus only on getting the response from female respondent as for the snowball sampling it's by it's relying on the social network so it's very appropriate when you you're doing study on social variable like uh, social media social networks that those kind of behavior social behavior or for sensitive uh, topics that you cannot uh, simply go and ask the the respondent if whether they have done something perhaps slightly taboo or uh, sensitive then uh, it's it's better for you to get a couple of respondents and ask them to forward the survey to their friends their circle of network that you think uh, that they think that they think is similar with them to have similar uh, background or similar or match this, the criteria of the study. Okay, and, uh, and uh, if you okay, that's that's for the non-probabilistic sampling. I think the group already explained the probabilistic sampling quite well, so I, I don't I, I I don't I won't repeat the the explanation. But, but basically, the the best uh, the best. Uh, sampling technique design is those of the complex random complex random and then simple random and then restricted non-probability sampling and the worst is convenience sampling okay uh, finally I think you can you can read this by yourself it's already been explained by the presenter so I won't repeat uh, repeat it again. Um, okay, the last but not least is determining the sample size. I think the presentation already clearly explained the different types of calculation or, or measurement or rule of thumb need uh, used to determine sample size. I'm, I'm going to add two more uh, methods of determining sample size based on first is based on the uh, size of the population. So this is by the Foss et al, 2010. Uh, they uh, 
they develop a guideline in selecting the size of sample so you can easily cite this in your in your uh, proposal as long as you get a rough idea of the number of population of your study of your of your study then you can use the percentage suggested for example if it's more than 200,000 then the percentage suggested is simply 1% but if it's, if it's uh, roughly if it's around 100,000 uh, 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 respondent then it's 2% okay. but if it's only 20 then the suggested percentage is 100% and it's it, uh, it's based on research and you can easily uh, cite this as a reference. Okay guys, last but not least is the item-based sample size. So one of the rule of thumb from here at all is to explain that if you're using SEM or structural equation modeling, then to test the model, it needs at least a five sample for each item of measurement. So for example, if your survey uses uh, 20 items, uh, then you will need at least five times the, that number of uh, respondents. So you need 100 respondents to be able to test the model. I think that's all for today's uh, additional uh, materials. Before I close this section, so I'd like to remind uh, all of you that there is a quiz that's already, I think, already uh, online uh, in a must that you can uh, you can uh, do after this, and it consists it tests for the the material from uh, meeting one to meeting seven. So hopefully, in, in which include this this session. So please do the the quiz. It will be. 20 a multiple choice question that you need to complete in 30 minutes. However, you can do it anytime you, you like. So the, the quiz is set up uh, from today up until Friday, uh, 4 p.m. So you so you can you can do it at your leisure. I know tomorrow is a public holiday, so if you don't want to do the quiz on public holiday, then you need to do it today. But if you cannot do it today, you can still do it tomorrow uh, up until Friday uh, 4 p.m. I think that is all uh, from me. So I think last but not least, I'd like to thank all of, uh, all of the students here for their participation. Uh, in this course, I think I, I had a quite uh, active interaction from the student, which is what I wanted from my class. Hopefully, uh, all of you will also uh, enjoyed learning the business research, research method. And uh, finally, I'd like to apologize if there's uh, something wrong with the way I teach or uh, something I said that's perhaps um, offend you or some something. So I'm, I apologize. Uh, hopefully, uh, with the current pandemic situation, it's unavoidable for us to use this uh, online learning system. But hopefully, by next semester, uh, the pandemic will already be uh, normalized, and then we can uh, return to face-to-face -face meeting and perhaps we can meet under uh, better circumstances after the pandemic uh, subside. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that is all from me. Uh, have a great holiday and don't forget to do your quiz. And also, uh, I hope you get a successful exam uh, next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.